But what we really care about right now is a big hole in the ground about here. Um, so this here was called the Amadeus Basin, okay, named after King Amadeus, I think of Spain. Have you heard of an Amadeus? Yeah. Amadeus. 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 Okay, I think he was married. Amadeus was, yeah. I think it's A-R though, A-R-M. Oh, I don't know. A-N-A-T-E-U-S. Amadeus. 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 Anyway, Amadeus was married to <laughs> Queen <laughs> Olga. So Amadeus and Olga were actually together. So then Amadeus ended up being gay. Kind of oh, yeah, issue. Okay. Okay. So uh, all right. So this is <laughs> side track there. Armadeus Basin. Yeah. Okay, it's a big hole in the ground. Uh, once you have a big hole in the ground, stuff's going to fall into this hole. Uh, so over the next 300 million years, we're going to fast forward this really easily. Uh, stuff fell into this hole. Sediment, oceans came in. They brought sand, silt blew in, rocks formed in there. So it all got covered over. Okay, so this big basin. Now, around 600 million years ago, we had something called an orogeny. An orogeny is a tectonic <laughs> movement, not erogenous. Dirty <laughs> vines. Orogeny. Mountain building episode. So this mountain building episode, what happened was, tectonic movement, pressure on the plates, squeezing the Australian plate this way and this way, in like this. What this created? Big mountain range, okay? Alright, just go with me here, this is what happens. So, <laughs> so you've got folding of the earth and pressure, this is over say 50 million years. Okay, it doesn't just pop up. Um, pressure on the plates like this, big mountain range gets created. This is called the Peterman Ranges and this was called the Peterman Orogeny. Orogeny. Um, this mountain range, they believe, could have been about 3 kilometres tall, so quite high for Australia. Um, and they think it could be up to sort of 10 kilometers long. So quite a good size for a mountain range. Now, about 600 million years ago, we really didn't have uh, this sort of stuff on the planet. It was really basic life. It was bacteria and algae. So you didn't have the grasses with the root systems to hold together the rock. So this mountain range, it fell apart really easily. It eroded. Now, um, during times of cooling of the earth, We'd have big ice, uh, big glaciers form on the top here, and then when the earth would start to heat up, the glaciers would melt, and they would start creating big rivers, and you'd have glacial sort of runoff. Uh, this helped erode this mountain, and it created two things called alluvial fans. This alluvial fan here, alluvial fans is just like the the shape that all the material makes when it comes off. It tends to just fan out. Uh, the Kings Canyon is a good photo of it. Um, so this alluvial fan um, was really close, or this first one was really close to the mountain. It was made up of really big chunky things. So you've got all the big chunky rocks that have come along from the top of the mountain. They're too heavy to be brought along too far in the rivers, so they all fall and collect really quite close. Okay. Now all the finer stuff, all the, the much smaller rocks and the sand, would actually get a, would be carried along with the water much further. And that all got deposited about 40 kilometers away from this one over to here. Oh, that's a rain there. Okay, so we're gonna slide my head in. Mm -hmm. So we've got these two things called alluvial fans. One chunky, one that's not really fine. Now, over the next 300 million years, so 600 million years to 300 million years, uh, over the next 300 million years, so 600 million years to 300 million years, this disappeared. Okay, and these two piles here, they had had oceans come in again cover them, you've got the whole weight of an ocean pushing down on this rock, pushing down, compressing, bringing more sediment in, more compression, the oceans recede, the land starts to cook, this sort of repeated process creates, helps to create rock. Um, this rock here turned into something called conglomerate rock, so it's a conglomeration of rock, so bits of rock within rock. Uh, this rock here turned into sandstone because it was made of much finer sand, and it's called Arco sandstone. Now, uh, 300 million years ago, or 340 million years ago, we had another orogeny. This one came from this direction and this direction. So, so this orogeny was uh, putting pressure on Australia this way, from what is now north and south. Uh, what this did over about another 40 million years, more rippling of the earth and folding and buckling, but it also push the whole centre of Australia up. 
So what, right now, we're about 550 metres above sea level, right here. So we're really quite high. When we were down, obviously in Port Augusta, we were pretty much at sea level. So we've been going uphill, almost, the whole way up here. And this was all to do with this orogeny. So it pushed the whole centre of Australia up. As this was all getting pushed up, it was getting folded as well. And this big pile of conglomerate rock it started to crack. It stick. It started to crack. So let's pretend this is the rock. And it cracked at right angles into squares. Okay, so all that pressure made it all crack. And then as it was getting pushed up out of the earth, it kind of convexed a bit. So like when you get a mango and push it out, it sort of came out like this. Um, over time, because this has been pushed up very high, rain's going to hit it first and water hates corners. All these rocks are nice and round because they were in rivers and all these big squares started to round off over time because of all the rain. And that's how we get Katachuta. Okay. Now we've got all these nice round domes. Uh, when we go up for a walk further, have a look in the rock. You'll see all these rocks in the rock. And you'll see that the rocks are smooth. They look like big river pebbles because they once were river pebbles. Um, that have now been stuck into all of this. Um, so that's that one there. Now this Arco sandstone, what this did as it was being pushed up, you got all the sedimentary layers going horizontal. Um, it started to crack through the middle and then buckle and then go up on itself. And so this tip here is the is the tip of Uluru, or is Uluru. And Uluru is the tip of an enormous block of sandstone. Uh, they think it could go about six kilometers down into the ground. Um, and that's why they say it's the biggest single rock in the world because it's not just what you see It's also the rest of it that goes all the way down into the ground Yeah, and it's about, uh, about a 90 degree angle uh, So tomorrow when you guys look at Uluru, you might see lots of the sedimentary layers going pretty much straight down um, And again because that got pushed up over time the waters hit it and it helps form the shape that it is today Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>